Lines. These things are wonderful. They block a lot of light coming into here. So, as you can get up here, you see you got these brackets. And you screw these brackets into the wall, and the lights clamp into them. The problem is, the spread for my beams is enough that I have to really push the edge of how these can attach here. You can see I had to take the caps off the end so these can attach. There's a way I like to do these. I got rid of the little trim pieces that were right there. Those right there. I'm gonna properly putty fill those when I repaint these walls because those things all over the walls look really freaking ugly. It's because they were too cheap to do a proper um, sheet rock job. So I will redo that. I'll proper putty tape them so it'll be a nice smooth wall. But anyway, I have a little trick for doing these. I didn't have time to do it today, but I'm gonna do it later. First, you sand this off a little bit so you get to the submaterial. I think this is actually, I don't know if this is sheetrock or wood. Um, the way the screws went in too easy on some spots, I think it's sheetrock. So what you do is you glue a little furring strip along the whole thing here. So put a glue strip, just you know, um, what do you call that stuff? Liquid nails. And you put a furring strip right along there, about that thick, one inch. And you glue it the whole length. And then you can screw these in anywhere you want. And that glue has enough surface area it'll never let go. So I'll redo these later like that. But right now I just need to get them up so that I can have some blindage in here and stop some of this light from coming through like that. This is a new style. It's called cordless. Let me give you a wide angle view. And apparently it's as simple as you grab it in the middle and lift. And look at that. It works. And it moves up. How that works over the long haul, I don't know, but I guess it does work. There we go. Now I have mini blinds. The only one I can't do is this one because I can't reach those with two hands. <laughs> and my gut's too big, so I can just barely touch that and I have to be able to reach that with two hands so I gotta wait till the step stool comes in so I can do this one but every other one how I should be able to do so those two are done these two are just about done I guess I, guess I could show you how this snaps right in so pop the caps off and this clips onto the front edge here and just snaps in place that's it. It's in. I gotta get you above the sunlight because the contrast difference is so high. And these, I do remember, are not quite long enough to completely cover these windows. These windows are so tall. I can get a little more coverage if I mount these on this aluminum bracket here. But it will only give me an extra inch and I got like five inches down there that need to be covered. So I'm not worried about it. What I might do is put a little frosting on that bottom part, like a little decorative frosting, or maybe later on find longer blinds, but I want it to have all the same, so. I now have much, much better light in here. It's not nearly, especially these back windows, because the sun is angled this way. So the house is actually pretty much always in shade to a point at the front, while the back, the sun just blares in. So these are gonna do a good job of keeping this place a little cooler. A little bit of house update for you guys. Hey, it's actually raining. My car will get a bath. <laughs> a little bit of rain. That'll cool things off nicely. It gets really cool here when it rains. I like it. Just a passing shower. I guess that goes directly outside. That must, that must be the cap on top being tapped by the rain. Ha! <laughs> cool! Look at that. It just rained here and that is so pretty. Right out my front yard. Wow. I guess that's the rest of the storm as it moves away. Wow. Front door is installed, basically complete. I just need to install some weather stripping, but everything's working now. And of course, I still have to replace the window, so let me show you what I did. Pro source doorknob. It doesn't even have a key. It's a passage door, like for a hall or closet, and that's because I use an electronic lock. So I have some, just to keep the bugs out and the air out for now, but you have your deadbolt, which is purely electronic, and this is your passage knob. 
so there's no keys at all. There's nothing to pick, although picking is not really the issue here. They just kick the door in. <laughs> so this is my quick set door lock. You press lock and it locks. And you press on lock and it unlocks. This just keeps the door shut when it's not locked. And then over here, to reinforce the wood, I always cover it in glue. So this is the jam for the um, deadbolt, and this is for the regular passage knob. And I had to thicken it up a little bit here. As you can see, I give you some. I gotta block out some of this light because it's so bright outside. Um, you see, I had to add this piece of wood here because the gap was too large. With that, with the gap as large as it was, this actually couldn't engage. This could engage, but this couldn't engage. So now this is glued in full length and screwed in. So it's like six screws holding it in and it's glued full length. So that should be reasonably strong. I mean, if somebody wants to kick in the door, they're gonna kick in the door. Then they'll meet Mr. 12 gauge. <laughs> but um, let's hope they don't wanna do that. But that's it, nice and simple. Got my front door installed and I, I think I already showed you, maybe not on the video yet, but I also got my steps. So I now have steps out the front of the house and the back of the house. If I don't trip over my own feet. So there we go. I'm gonna remove the storm door. It doesn't close properly and I don't want it anyway. I'm just gonna get rid of it. But that's it. Pretty awesome. That little air conditioner is baller, man. 5,000 BTU and it's cool in this whole house. Gets a little warm in the four to seven o'clock range, but not bad considering it's 90 degrees out. That low humidity is a wonder. You need a wide angle view. There we go. But yeah, now I have a proper front door, proper front steps and back steps. Don't need to use that anymore. That's for the bus. And now I just have to replace the pretty purple mylar with a window. It's surprisingly difficult to find a 22 by 36 window. I mean, closest I've gotten is an entire kit for 120 bucks. I'm trying to find just the 22 by 36 by half inch double pane glass. So if anybody has any idea where I can find that, assuming I don't find it before I post this video, let me know. There is something everybody should do every once in a while. And then just consider how much we take for granted. Something so simple, seemingly simple, as running water. <laughs> you don't realize just how much you miss something like that until you don't have it. <laughs> All bulbs in the house are now LED. Every single bulb, including the fridge. Um, I still want to add more light, but for now, good enough. Outside lights, inside lights, everything's LED. Um, nice day white. I don't like yellow. And water is mostly done. Um, all supply lines are done. So now my kitchen sink works. Yay! I have water. So in theory, all water supply lines work now, but I think I have something wrong with the sewer. So there's something wrong with the output lines, the drain lines, because I get blockages where water backs up more in certain places than others. So I'm going to have to um, probably call somebody out to look at it because that's a little bit beyond my skill level. I don't want to screw something up, but we shall see. Next up is getting the washer and dryer going. Lovely washer and dryer one of my viewers gave me. Uh, I mentioned his name in the clip where I show these off for the first time with him in it. I got these supply lines for cold and hot. These are redone, hot and cold. And I have my drain right there. And I also got, this house uses the old four conductor, 220 volt line. So I got the four, because this dryer is newer, it uses a three conductor. But apparently it's got the positions for all four. So all I have to do is swap this in place. Also, new breakers. So I now have a 30 amp breaker for the car and for the hot water heater, because I have a new 50 gallon hot water heater. So we now have not only running water, but running hot water. And next up, I'm going to get these two machines going. I don't know if the blockage will prevent me from actually draining this machine. It's a small machine, so hopefully 
not too much water because it would suck if it all started pouring out of there. <laughs> we shall see. Well, I discovered that there's enough room here for a four foot and a three foot to go together. So I'm going to have these two here, another four foot there, and I'm going to get another three foot to put here. That should be more than enough storage space for all my canned goods and whatnot. So that will work out well. Here's the mess I have to get to in here. This is going to be interesting. I mean, getting this out will be no problem. Spare tire, just roll it down the stairs. But everything else is going to be really hard. Because I have to get rid of this first row of bins in order to get to my microwaves. They're sitting right here. And then I have to pull that table out in order to start pulling these canned goods out. And that's not going to be easy. This is what I needed my friend's help with. But, you know, he had to go home. So, bank delayed closing. So, we shall see. I'm going to start pulling it out little by little and see how much I can get done today. All right. I can get that and that out. I can get those out. I am not sure if I'm physically capable of getting these out. You see, the problem is that bin is higher than the door edge here. You can see, you can't see the top of the bin. Which means to get that bin out, I've got to turn this row of bins 90 degrees and then slide that bin off the top of that and bring it down sideways to the floor. The problem is that requires me to take the full weight of that bin and I can't do it by the handles. I have to put my hands underneath it and bring the bin down and this arm is still screwed up. It's, it is getting better. Like I know I, ha I can twist a little bit more now without it hurting. Um, but from what I understand, talking to people in the medical field, it's a muscle strain or something like that. I damaged the muscle carrying too much weight when I was loading this, when I was hefting that cap all by myself to put on top of the pickup truck because I had no help. Um, I stretched, tore, strained something, a muscle in my arm. And they say the only way to heal that is to not use it. It's not like joints where you have to use them in physical training in order for them to heal properly. Muscles you can't use. If you use them, the damage continues. Um, and I don't think I, I don't think this arm can literally hold that much weight. These bins are 60, 70 pounds each, some of them. Some more. Some are over 100 pounds. Most of them are around 40 to 60 pound range, but some of these are pretty heavy. Like that one, I believe, has got all the ammo in it. And that's at like 130 pounds, 140 pounds. Whew. <laughs> Apparently my dad had a whole bunch of ammo in the bottom of the gun cabinet, so I figured it was worth bringing. It's all brass, so it's all very heavy. But, see, that's on the bottom. So I could slide that out, slide it down this onto a hand truck. But that one right there, I have to take the full weight of, and I don't think I can do that without hurting myself. But I might be able to get a microwave out. I can't get the top one out. But I might be able to finagle the bottom one out. You know, I might be able to turn this stack of bins once I empty this stuff out, and I might be able to get that out. The trick is, when the top one drops into the space left by the bottom one, can I control the drop to not break it? Or, when I turn these bins, will that be enough space to allow me to get the top one out? I don't know. We shall find out. And the other problem is, I wanted to get to that bin there empty with my friend. That was the goal, is to have him help me empty this part because once this part's empty, I can actually climb into the bus and stand up. Once I can stand up, I can pick a crate up carefully and lay it on the floor in a controlled manner and then use a hand truck, slide it out, pull it into the house, etc. I also can't take too much out of here yet because um, I don't know what a lot of this is individually and I don't want to fill up the house too quickly and then you know, not know where to put everything so I'll just be clusterfucked. So I'm trying to avoid that. But I do need to start getting these canned goods out of here, which means I've got to get the printers and stuff off the top of it. I got a blanket wrapped around everything to um, avoid damaging things. But I gotta get those printers out and these boxes out and this table out so that I can start pulling this canned goods out because they're starting to cook in the cans out here in the sun. Uh, well, it doesn't get crazy hot out here, like 92 degrees is the typical max. Um, anything behind glass like this inside cars gets real hot real fast 
And um, so, I mean, they're fine now, but they're gonna get hot. Um, especially as they cycle 60 degrees at night, 92 during the day, 60 at night, 92 during the day, 60 at night. It's, that's temperature cycling, not good for them. So I gotta get them out of here. This is my big steel table. The other parts inside the house. I think these are the legs for it. Yeah, I think these are the legs for it. Yep. These are the legs for the table. I taped the Allen key I need for it to the table so I don't have to worry about finding that. I gotta get that pillow out, some shells pillow. I bought her new pillows. I told her we're not bringing any of the grungy stuff. I got new stuff. But that's it. We will go from there. Here's the freezer. And there's the little fridge, and then there's another freezer down there. A little chest freezer, you can just see it right there. I don't know if the light will let you see it. There it goes. You can see it right there, chest freezer. So, temperatures are holding good. Negative 19 degrees inside the freezers. So, let's see, can I get this open? Oh, yes, I can open this. There we go. Yeah, I got lots of yum-yums in here. Mmm, yum-yum-yum. <laughs> Irreplaceable yum yums since I can't get food this cheap out here. I have to be careful. Not use it up too quick until I can find a replacement source for that. Be living off of this for a while. But yeah, as you can see, pack this bugger all the way to the roof. <laughs> ah, stupid. I shouldn't have brought this much stuff. More to come.